I, I like to say that we're early. Um, we're a, like I look at Bitcoin and I think it should be priced in market cap, not in coins because you, you're, you're really, Bitcoin really is an industry. Uh, it's, it's actually the only industry for the very reasons you just talked about, just the examples. I have never invested in a, uh, the guy that discovered the idea. Like I hate the first guy. Uh, I'm like a man. Everybody wants to be first. I'm like, give me an example where first actually ended up first because I number eight ends up first. They learn from the guy, the first seven guys. Like I have Node 40, right? We, we learned from 12, 12 companies that raised half a billion dollars in cash on no revenue. And now they have a problem because they raised too much money and they literally launched a project into a marketplace that, uh, and, and I am talking about digital, where they overpromise, they grossly underdelivered, and they grossly understood the problem they're trying to solve, which is how do you track all of these digital assets, and how do you do it in a really efficient manner? Right. Um, keeping in mind, no one's done this before because no one's really paid any taxes or done right. any accounting on crypto. Sadly. They've yeah. acted like this is going to be the Wild West forever. It's not. It's actually getting very professional now. Uh, I came in this space in 2016 and really started putting a bunch of ener energy into it in 2018, 19. I think actually my, my entry into this is really good timing because I haven't spent 12 years. Now, there's a lot of things I don't know about the industry. But the first 12 or 14 years, a lot of discovery, a lot of mistakes are made. Uh, I just see us on the precipice of really now moving into a multi-trillion dollar from 1.2 to $3 trillion industry right. um, that's going to offer opportunities. And th that's the what I would have labeled this, Bob, is, um, you know, guy with your background, why Bitcoin? And you must see tremendous opportunities here. You own it. Now you're building a business around it. Let's talk a little bit about the opportunities you see here, uh, both from a personal perspective of investing and also from a Bitcoin mining perspective and, and how you would look at that investment. Sure. All right. Well, you know, my impetus largely comes around that I now look back at the world with a lot of clarity you know, and, and, you know, I can say that, that while I worked hard and, and I'm very proud of what I did, um, I was, I was very fortunate and lucky in certain ways. And, and the truth of the matter is I was in a system that did help me that I'm not sure is a fair system, right? Mm. I, was, I was in a good position for it. I, I, and, but, but, um, you know, we like when I was at Gateway, we IPO'd in 1993. So I had, I had joined about a year and a half before, got a bunch of stock options. Like I said, I I, I I'm proud of what I did. Yeah, and I did really well, right? I got a lot of pre-IPO shares. I continued to gain shares. Um, I saw you do a little thing, Gary. One day I was watching some of your stuff, and you said, "Well, hey, you know, you you can get rich working for somebody else." You had made that phrase. And, and while I do work for myself and believe in entrepreneurship and all that, there are paths um, where you can do really well. And I, I think I was one of those people also that benefited from that. Um, but I also, part of my story, my story really begins, I would say, my Bitcoin journey really begins in earnest in 2001. Because what had happened was I, I had made a lot of money in the 90s. Um, and I had cashed out and I had, I had managed to a certain degree my money well. Well, I was still active in the company and I, and I had a, a, a big pile of money. And I, and I said, well, I'm not going to give all this money to like one financial advisor or wealth advisor. So I hired three of them and I gave them each a third of my money. And I said to each of them, hey, I'm working hard. I'm traveling all over the world. I work a gazillion hours a week. Please manage this money for me, but don't lose it. Like that's, that was my direction to them. 2001, 2002 came, that was the Enron thing, all the, uh, uh, basically a big crash. Come back a few years later, look at my portfolio and sure enough, lost a whole bunch of money. Right. And 
at the same time, you know, I was a C-suite executive in what became a Fortune 200 company. So I also started to interact through the 90s. I had started to interact with Wall Street a lot personally. So I would, I would go on the road shows. We would hold the investor calls. I was the technology guy. I was selling them on our future technology vision, that sort of thing. Well, I'll be blunt about it. When I first went into the whole thing, I thought, oh, I'm going to be meeting with the Smith Barney guy, the Morgan Stanley yeah, guy. Yeah, the 22-year-old. Well, you didn't know he was 22. Yeah, well, what I expected to meet somebody who was brilliant and experienced. And what I found was, you know, people that didn't know jack shit. They knew jack shit. And they, all they cared about was creating volatility in our stock. That's what they, they didn't care if we were doing better or worse. Um, I, I didn't even know, I, even with insider information, I could have never traded our stock well because they were just manipulating it continually. They, they would take good news and turn it into bad news. They take bad news and turn it into good news because that's the direction they wanted our stock to go. I became just completely disillusioned by that whole system. And, um, so I started looking elsewhere. I found I mentioned I have a background in economics too, and I I also realized that it was complete bullshit what I had learned in my formal education. I found Austrian economics around two thousand one two thousand two. Um, so I started reading Hayek and uh, von Mises and some of those sort of on the side. So I was kind of ready for Bitcoin. Um, to a certain degree, I'm not sure why it took me till 2017 to get there. Um, but, but those well, why, things- why, let's, let's talk about that. So why did it? What, Cause I have this thesis. Uh, I saw it in 16. No, I saw it in 14, 16 past. Uh, what, why did you initially, uh, push it off? I think my first exposure was 2012 and, at the time, I had left Gateway. I was running a technology incubator. One of those companies was a computer refurbishment company. And so what we would do is we would take computers that would come from school districts or the government or a big corporation. They were going out of commission. We would buy them for a few pennies on the dollar, bring them in, refurbish them, and then resell them, usually to poor school districts and things like that. But we would have in our warehouse, we'd have thousands of computers that were um, that were advanced. Well, one day, there was a guy that worked for me, lovely man. His name is Scott. And Scott, um, Scott was the kind of a tin f- hat foil guy. You know, he would come into my office. I love the guy. He'd come in like once a week and tell me about everything from the aliens to the you know, whatever. There was always something, you know. So one day he walks into my office and he says, Bob, have you heard about Bitcoin? No. He said, well, we should, what we should do, it was a brilliant idea, is we've got these thousands of computers here that are, mm. we're sitting there waiting to sell them. Why don't we plug them in and we'll mine Bitcoin? And I ran the math, the engineer in me, well, okay, I, I don't know anything about Bitcoin, but let me see if I can make money at very fiat mentality on the whole thing. And I looked at it and it didn't make money. And, and then Scott, I I was really skeptical because Scott was the one telling me to, by the way, there's a Mm. lesson in life in that. Like totally, you know, totally. And share, so, share the lesson because I know what you're getting ready to say, but share the lesson with the audience. Yeah, I, I was pre- I, the idea was prejudiced from the beginning because it came from Scott, who's a guy I love. But, you know, but but the truth of the matter is he was the guy more likely to see it first because he he had the open mind. He was always open to these ideas. And turns out I was closed. Like and 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 uh, that was a lesson for me. So. Um, so we didn't do it by the way, God bless Scott. He had taken some of his own money. He, um, he did it by himself and even as a small miner with a couple of machines in those early days was able to, um, mine enough money. And he wasn't really a Bitcoiner at the core, but 
he he held long enough that he was able, he cashed out and bought a house for his family, like the like bought a house outright for his family, and you know it was a, a great story uh, for him that he was able to change uh, the 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 life and the quality of life of his family as a result of it. But um, but it took me it took me four or five years post that to clear my prejudice and really start looking at it in the right way again. 